Welcome to this lecture about the one proportion Z test. In this video, we'll discuss the one proportion Z test and the corresponding confidence interval for this test. In the next lecture, we'll see how the so called chi square goodness of fit test can be used as an alternative to the one proportion Z test. In that lecture, we'll also compare these two tests. When we like to analyze a proportion from just one sample, we can either use a one proportion Z test or the chi square goodness of fit test. If we instead like to analyze the difference between two sample proportions, we can either use a two sample proportion Z test or an appropriate chi square test. What you see here is the formula for the one proportion Z test. The test can be used to test if there is a significant difference between a proportion from a sample and a proportion according to the null hypothesis. P hat is the sample proportion, and P zero is the proportion according to the null hypothesis, which we like to compare with. And N is the sample size of our sample. The numerator represents the difference between our sample proportion and the proportion we like to compare with. Whereas the denominator represents the standard error. Note the similarity to the one sample t test, which also calculates the difference between the estimate and the value according to the null hypothesis. This difference is then divided by the standard error. We will now compute the one proportion Z test based on the following example. In an extensive study from 2015, a group of investigators analyzed how common allergy was in a certain population. The study that covered the complete population found that 53% had some sort of allergy, whereas 47% did not have an allergy. Note that this is not the sample, since the whole population was analyzed. Five years later, the investigators wanted to see if the proportion of individuals with allergy in the population had increased or decreased since 2015. However, this time the investigators did not have enough resources to analyze the whole population. Instead, they just took a sample of 100 individuals from the population. In this sample, 49 persons, or 49%, had some sort of allergy whereas 51 individuals did not have an allergy. Based on this sample, we like to know if the proportion of allergic people in the population has changed over the five years. The null hypothesis states that the proportion of allergic individuals have not changed since 2015, whereas the alternative hypothesis states that there is a change in the proportion since 2015. Note that P represents the population proportion in 2020 that we have estimated to 49% based on our sample. Based on our sample, we can see that the proportion of people with allergy has declined since the year 2015. However, does this decrease represent a true decline in allergies, or is this just due to chance? To answer this question, we can use a one proportion Z test. Let's calculate the set statistic based on the sample proportion of 49%, a sample size of 100 individuals, and the proportion according to the null hypothesis. Since the null hypothesis states that there is no change in the proportion, the hypothesized value is 53% since this was the proportion from 2015 when the whole population was analyzed. Note that P0 represents the hypothesized value which usually represents the known population proportion or proposed proportion by the investigator. Next, we plug in the corresponding values in the equation. We see that the difference between the two proportions is negative 0.04 and that the standard error is equal to 0.05. This results in a set statistic of negative 0.8. We then use the software to calculate the area to the left hand side of negative 0.8 and to the right hand side of positive 0.8 in the standard normal distribution because this area will represent our p value. The area of these two tails is computed to 0.42. Our p value is therefore 0.42, which is greater than the significance level of 
We can therefore not reject a null hypothesis, which means that we do not have enough evidence to say that the proportion of people with allergy has changed since 2015. We now have a look at assumptions for the one proportion set test. The first assumption states that our sample should represent independent individuals randomly selected from the population. Since we use the standard normal distribution to compute the p-value, we assume that the set statistic follows a normal distribution under null hypothesis. The distribution under null hypothesis looks like this in our example where 53% of the population have allergy, whereas 47% do not have allergy. We may only have two possible outcomes like this. This is called the Bernoulli distribution, which definitely does not look like a normal distribution. However, if we take a sample with a size of, for example, 20 data points from this distribution, we might get the following outcome. We see that, in this sample, 60% of the individuals have some sort of allergy. If we take another sample, we happen to get 50% of individuals with allergies in our sample this time. If we continue like this, for example 10,000 times, we'll get 10,000 sample proportions. These two proportions are the ones we saw earlier. Whereas the last sample contained 55% of individuals with allergies. If we plot those 10,000 sample proportions, those will be distributed like this. Most of the samples have a proportion around 53%, which is expected since the distribution we sample from includes 53% individuals with allergies. Due to chance, the sample of 20 individuals may sometimes include quite few persons with allergies, and sometimes the sample may include a relatively large fraction that has an allergy. If you place the normal distribution curve on top of the histogram, we see that the sample proportions are approximately normally distributed and centered around 0.53. Now, Let's say that we would instead take 10,000 samples with a sample size of 20 from this population where 90% of the individuals have allergies. Then the green bars representing the distribution of the 10,000 sample proportions no longer follow a normal distribution. This is because many values accumulate at the edge of the range because the proportion cannot be greater than 100%. If we instead increase the sample size to 50, we get a distribution with a shape that fits much better to the normal distribution. This is because a bigger sample size results in sample proportions that are much closer to 0.9, with fewer values close to 1. With a bigger sample size, fewer samples will by chance include only individuals with allergies. Therefore, the minimum sample size required to assume that the set statistic is normally distributed is dependent on the expected proportion. To fulfill the normality assumption for the one proportion set test, we therefore need to increase the sample size if the proportion, according to the null hypothesis, is close to 1 or 0. By using the following guidelines that state that the expected frequencies have to be at least 5, we can assume that the sample proportions are approximately normally distributed. For example, if we use a sample size of 50 and multiply by the hypothesized proportion of 0.9, we get the number 45, which is greater than 5. And if we multiply 50 by 1 minus 0.9, we get a number that is equal to 5. In both these cases, we got a value that was greater or equal to 5 which means that we should fulfill the assumption of normality. We'll now calculate the corresponding 95% confidence interval for our sample proportion, which is computed by taking our estimated proportion plus or minus the critical value from the normal distribution times the standard error. As we have seen in the previous video about the normal distribution, the range between negative 1.96 and positive 1.96 covers 95% of the area in a standard normal distribution. Our critical value is therefore 
with a 95% confidence interval. The standard error is calculated in the same way as the denominator of our previous Z test. We see that the standard error based on the population proportion of 0 0.53 and the sample size of 100 is equal to 0 0.05. We now plug in our values in the equation for the confidence interval, where p hat is equal to 0 0.49, the critical value is 1.96, and the standard error is equal to 0 0.05. 1.96 times 0 0.05 is approximately equal to 0 0.1. Note that this term is called the margin of error which represents how far from our estimate we think that the true population proportion is. In this case, the margin of error is 10%, which means that the true proportion of people with allergies is expected to lie within 10 percentage points around our sample estimate of 49%. 49% plus or minus 10% results in a confidence interval that goes from 0 0.39 to 0 0.59. We are thereby 95% sure that the true proportion of allergic people in the population in the year 2020 lies between 0 0.39 and 0 0.59. In other words, if we would have analyzed the whole population, we would be 95% certain that the proportion of people with allergies in the year 2020 would lie between 39% and 59%. Since this range includes the hypothesized value of 0 0.53, we cannot reject the null hypothesis since 0 0.53 is a plausible value according to this range. Note that this is a very wide confidence interval, which means that we are quite uncertain about the proportion of people with allergies. To reduce the width of the confidence interval, we must use a much bigger sample size. In the next lecture, we'll discuss the chi square good and fit test. This test uses completely different calculations, but will result in the same p-value as our one-proportion z-test. This was the end of this lecture about the one-proportion z-test. Thanks for watching.